Sagar Rana, thank you for joining us for this Nepali Times um, studio discussion. And today we'll talk about uh, your book, which is going to be launched uh, today, in fact, Friday. Um, and it's called Singadarbar. And it's about your family and your clan, the Ranas, which ruled Nepal for uh, more than 100 years. How long had this book been incubating in your mind? Being uh, connected closely with both sides, I thought our version would be much more objective than that of anybody else on either yeah. side of the, of, the, of the divide. Because you were an insider as well as an outsider. Insider as well as an outsider, uh, uh, one who did enjoy the, 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 the palaces, mm -hmm. the, the, all the good things in the palaces, luxuries you may call it, comforts of the palaces, the education. But also uh, in, we, we had been to the poorest of poorest parts, yeah. mixed with the people of, of, of the poorest in Nepal. So what's so special about you three brothers that you know, you, the other runners also saw the poverty and the feudalism and the social injustices around you. But what made you three so different? My father was also a liberal minded. Oh, okay. uh, when he came back this from is Calcutta, Mirandra 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 when he came back from Calcutta, he was the, one of the first Nepalese, first Rana and third Nepalese, they say, who did their MA, MA in English, he did, from Calcutta. So being in Calcutta the, during those days, uh, the, I'm talking about 1930s mm -hmm. and 40s, he saw the revolution then, yeah. movement of revolution. And that, that has, has inspired many people, including our uh, leaders of the democratic movement, to somehow change, mm -hmm. find change in Nepal. <coughs> and I'm sure he had the same idea, although he was a very strong mm -hmm. member, a strongly entrenched member of the family at that time in mm -hmm. 1930. Your great-grandfather, Chandra Samser himself, is supposed to have said that <coughs> education uh, would be the death knell of the Rana. He felt that, uh, yes, it would bring down the Rana. Eventually, education, spread of education to mm -hmm. Nepal would bring down the Rana system. And he was right. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Yeah. What was your grandfather like? He was more of a hardliner, Babar Samser. He was very much of a hardliner. You are seen as a hardliner. He wanted to maintain the drama system <coughs> very... And, and he was zealous about it, that he should come. But he was also a fair man. Mm. He, he saw the law. He would apply the law as it was. Would it be correct to say that ever since Jangavadur's time, and his visit to France and UK in 1850, Jangavadur came back with a deep appreciation and probably admiration of the British Empire and its power and strength, and therefore decided that he would be England's friend. And immediately after, sent troops down to, the, to quell the mutiny to help the British. Do you think that that legacy of Jangavadur, um, you know, stayed on throughout the, the Rana period? that somehow it was this link with Britain, the fact that our soldiers were in their army, that preserved the, the, the power and, uh, and, and the dynasty of the, of the Ranas in Nepal. Um, the, 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 the closeness, friendship with, with Britain ensured, not in, went, led to protection of the Rana regime or its stronghold within Nepal, but also some development mm -hmm. because they were helping us. And they were helping us in, in several ways. And at the same time, it was a policy to placate them so that we would get our, our, free, our, our, our sovereignty. The 1923 uh, yeah, treaty. The 1923 treaty was because a policy of appeasement with, with the mm -hmm. British sending the troops to England to fight, helping Britain to that extent, was not merely because of the friendship. It was, yeah. it was a strategic move. It was a strategic move. So in a sense, the, the blood that Nepali soldiers shed in Belgium and Gallipoli 
actually preserved our independence in a way. In a way, yes. In a way, it did. Uh, it was very sad that they had to die. So would you say that when we come down to 1947, the British are about to quit India, that the Rana regime, Mon Samsher, found himself to be on the wrong side of history? And when the war ended, so, yeah. did, so did the government in, in the conservative government in England. Mm -hmm. And instead of the conservative, uh, the Social Democrats, the Labour Party came. Mm -hmm. And the whole, whole concept, that feeling the, mm -hmm. that yes, they are going to help us, changed drastically. Mm -hmm. Which is the Labour government was for independence in India. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of the book, we get a real feeling for where the, the nature of India-Nepal relations comes from, because the roots were laid down back then in 1950 with Nehru, who wanted, it seems, to take, to have more control over how Nepal evolved politically. And uh, the chapter that you have here on Tribhuvan, how he fled to the Indian Embassy, how he was taken to Hyderabad House in Delhi, and almost imprisoned, because he couldn't even meet anyone else. Do you think that that was a precursor to India's present-day relations with Nepal? India, every country has its own interests vis-à-vis this relationship with others. And India, the reason um, King Tribhuvan was taken that way was to ensure that, uh, I think to make sure that the future change would have, uh, in the future scenario, India will have some hand in Nepal. So, it was quite a devious act at that time, yeah. there is no doubt about it. Well, Nehru was furious uh, to find out that although Thiruvan was in Delhi, that BP and the Nepali Congress had, had launched a military campaign against the Ranas. Uh, and, and the fact that it was done without his consent infuriated him. It did. He was furious. He, he, he almost locked up the, the leaders of Nepali Congress. Nehru was probably wanted the change here yeah, to go very slowly according to his speed. And the, middle, the middle path as you call it. The middle path as he called it. You know, everybody should be involved. He, he was a Democrat, I have no doubt about it. But he was also a, a, a very cautious mm. in a changeover where India will have a lesser role. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating book. I think uh, parts of this uh, saga reads uh, like a thriller, uh, and um, I think it's a, it's a must read for all history students, but even others who are interested in Nepal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.